My Tesla solar panels have been up and running for six months. I have my electricity bills, production numbers, and the reason why Tesla needed to come back to my house urgently. Welcome back to the Cobra Pit, whether you're a longtime viewer or a newer subscriber like Dan Crawford, I see you. I appreciate every single one of you. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I'd also like to thank the few of you who've used my code to order your Tesla Solar. It really does feel good knowing that there's so many channels out there, but you value what I have to say. Really appreciate it. But boy, does time fly. I had my panels installed on my birthday in September, but I didn't get my permission to operate date until November. The video about the whole process is right here. I ordered the 12 and 2100 kilowatt system, which has an advertised range of 40 to 59 kilowatt hours of daily production. Well, let's see how they've been doing. While yes, it was winter in November, I was still a little concerned because of the lower than estimated output. My panels did not hit the 40 mark on most of the days. I did have higher peaks in December, but there are also cloudy days that brought my total solar energy to 1136 with an average of about 36 kilowatt hours a day. Remember, we're still in winter. January showed some growth with an average of 42 kilowatt hours a day and my highest day of 52 and 7 tenths. I was starting to see the estimated numbers now and I started to feel a little better about my purchase. Then February hit. It was a great one. We had a total of 1,443 kilowatt hours in a short 28 day month. That's about 51 a day. The highest day that I reached was 67 and 5 tenths. Very, very nice. Next is March. Now the solar panels are speaking my language. It did warm up a bit and the sun is out a little longer. We average just about 60 kilowatt hours a day, which surpasses our highest estimated daily production. Our highest day to date was the 31st at 77 kilowatt hours. At the time of making this video, April is on pace to give us 62 a day with a high of, wait for it, 78.5 kilowatt hours on the 18th. Things are definitely looking up. To sum it all up, I'm very happy with the production so far. I can't wait to see what happens in summer, but they are far exceeding my expectations. So I bet you guys really wanna know how this affects my electric bill. So just so we have some context here, we have two electric vehicles, a Model X with a large 100 kilowatt hour battery. And like I said, in March, we started using our AC a little bit more. I live in Southern California and we have Edison as our utility. They really had issues transferring customers over to their required net metering program. It took them three months to move us over, which they gave us two options. Either continue paying our bill, which was the outdated old plan for $239, $248, and $213 respectively. And then they said they'll credit our accounts or we don't pay until they sort things out. We elected to pay the full incorrect bill. I don't want them coming looking for me later for their money. Hopefully your local utility has things in order much better than mine did. So to keep it as simple as possible, our most recent bill would have been $33.85. They give everyone $29 for a twice a year California climate credit, but we'll stick with the $33.85 for March. It's not as low as you would think, right? Well, here's why. We still have our basic delivery charge at 71 cents per day. And we have non-bypassable charges that is now included in our utility's new net metering program. These charges are for things like funding California wildlife support, low income programs, and things of that nature. So we will generally pay about this much a month. February was $39 and January was 40 and you get the point. Now this is way less expensive than our previous bills and the money's going to a good proper cause. So that's one way of looking at it. It's not bad at all. So that great month of March has us at negative 340 kilowatt hours, which will factor in during the really hot days in summer to balance out our bill. I'll keep you guys all posted on how that goes, running that AC all day, er day. And finally, let me tell you why I had Tesla come back to my home. 
I sent in the final pictures of my system to the HOA for approval and they sent it back stating that my PVC did not match the color of my home. Now the reason why this was urgent because I didn't mail out the paperwork as soon as it was completed. Then they told me I had two weeks to correct the issue. Two weeks. So I call up Tesla, they are here the next day. That was way faster than I expected. Now I don't know why they did such a poor job matching the color in the first place, but they corrected it promptly and they took care of it, no problem. I hear all types of things about Tesla customer service from great to horrible and everything in between. So far I have nothing but good experiences with them. Yeah, they made a mistake, but they fixed it. One viewer mentioned in the comment section that it may be the region you live in or uh, who's available at that time. So like anything else, it does vary, but um, I can't speak on that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, Cobra told you. All right, y'all.